here at Franklin High School. We've got a great day of hoops coming up. We'll take the next two games off and pass it over to our comrades at ESPN Plus, but we'll be back for the nine o'clock game as well. And in this one, for the Chancellors, led by Coach Jerry Quinn, 46th season, an absolute legend in the coaching space. Uh, you got that right, Jackie, uh, an absolute legend for sure. I, I mean, a 2018 Hall of Famer. And, and you look at it, over 1,000 uh, career wins. I mean, he's just cranking out talent like crazy. And the Chancellor School, you want to talk about cranking out talent. I mean, you, you're talking about names, Andre Drummond, Damian Lee, Amari Spellman, it goes wow. on to the names that come out of this school. And no slouch on the other bench either, Coach Joe Mantegna in his 25th season at the helm of Blair Academy. Just passed his 450th win this season, and he has the Buccaneers in great shape late in this season. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, as you said, a 17-3 uh, record, just absolutely astonishing for him. And, and Look at Adam, you know, an accomplished resume in his own right. I mean, an assistant coach for the South Sudan men's basketball team. Uh, he's definitely going to be known to get this done. And uh, he's also been known to crank out talent, right? Luau Deng, of course, uh, known from him. And two quality programs in this matchup. Yeah, no question for Blair Academy. A couple names to watch for, but headlined by the four-star sophomore, Duran Rippey. I mean, listen, the kid can almost have his pick all around the country. When you see him over at Rutgers, we know that two of the top three uh, recruits in this class in, in Dylan Harper and East Bailey will be over there. Although, knowing them, they probably won't be there by the time he gets there. But the kid can literally take his pick. I I'm expecting to see a, a lot from him. You've been hearing a lot of good noise and, and you know, Great athleticism from the kid, always making the right shot. And let's not forget, I mean, was made, uh, I believe, was up until the final cut on the 2016 uh, Youth USA team, right? Yeah, yeah. And on the other side for St. Thomas Moore, a ton of talent. It looks like they're going to be shorthanded today without one of their best players in the seven foot senior, Ben Defty, but still a ton of firepower, including Tyler Betsy, the Cincinnati commit. Well, you know what, I think that's just what it comes down to. You know, it, it, your best guy might not be out, but let's be honest, there's multiple options when it comes to this team. So this is gonna give Betsy a chance to further shine and further show the University of Cincinnati why he's the guy that they need. Yeah, not sure what the holdup is here. There's a uh, little bit of talk at the scorer's table right now. Try and figure out what the issue is holding us up here. It's just about tip-off time here in Somerset, New Jersey. Again, if you're just joining us, Jack Bartek, Brandon Morazzo, you're listening to NJ Hoop Recruit, powered by All Abilities Live. We have this game and then also the 9 o'clock game, Roselle Catholic and Manasquan facing off in a South Central Jersey showdown here at the Metro Classic. ESPN Plus will have the two middle games today. And then once again, NJ Hoop Recruit, powered by All Abilities Live, will take you through the gauntlet tomorrow, starting at 10.30 all the way to 9 o'clock, the showcase game of the day, Montverde and St. Rose. Plenty of basketball before then. And, man, Brandon, it's hard not to be excited for it, especially after a day like yesterday. Oh, man, I mean, listen, the Hodge brothers getting us going off against Union Catholic and some quality competition. And that was only game one. And... and I feel like each day we're just going to be adding to the level of competition. And it has nothing to do, not that game one wasn't a bad matchup, it was absolutely fantastic. It's just when you have more games out on the court and you see more players that you recognize, and I'm sure a couple of these names that people will be recognizing due to that ESPN top 100 list, it just breeds competition, and that's what it's all about as we wait to get it here underway. Just, you know figuring some things out, but I'll tell you, Jackie, what an event, and it's only day two. Yeah, once again, not sure what the delay is. It looks like now they're announcing starting lineups, but some issues at the scorer's table early on. So a little bit of a delay to start the day, but we got good basketball ahead. And Maz, I'll put you on the spot here as we have an extra second. Most impressive performances of the day yesterday. Oh uh, man, you know, I, I gotta say, although younger brother Jaden led in the points with 24, what I saw from the 97th recruit in Matt Hodge was absolutely fantastic, Jackie. I mean, you saw a full package display. Uh, I can't, you saw, but 
high impact down low, uh, an NBA-esque play on a floater where he was able to switch hands on a seven-foot defender. Absolutely insane. The vision's there, the rebounding is there, the defense is definitely there, but for me, probably the most impressive is being that kind of size and his shooting ability. I can't wait to see when there's a, uh, a pass-first point guard with him in the lineup because when he doesn't have to be the guy to run the offense, he can really get into some spaces to do damage. Well, on that note, we have starting lineups, and it looks like we're just about set to go. So not sure what the holdup was, but lineups announced. And first, we'll start with the Blair Academy Buccaneers, once again, coached by 25th-year head coach Joe Mantegna. They go with the sophomore, Duran Rippey, the senior, Lucas Schmid, the senior, Jaden Williams, the junior, Jack Bailey, and the senior, Eric Iakwaba. On the other side for St. Thomas More, the Chancellor's led by Jerry Quinn, 46th season at the helm. He trots out the senior, Tyler Betsy, the senior, Will Davies, the junior, London Jameson, the senior, Isaiah Pasha, and the senior, A.J. Rodriguez. Two of the best prep schools on the East Coast, ready to go. Blair in the white with the gray letters and numbers. St. Thomas More, the inverse, the navy blue with the gray St. Thomas More across the chest. Day two of the Metro Classic underway here at Franklin High School. And Blair Academy controls the tip. Just little things that you can win to get things going, get that edge, get that first possession. Now it gives you that chance to get that first bucket. And a quick whistle here. Not sure what the holdup is. I believe the shot clock didn't start. So if you are normally accustomed to the New Jersey high school basketball rules, which if you follow us here on All Abilities Live, that's what you'll normally see. That's what was played last night in the St. Rose Union Catholic game today. Prep rules. Brandon is very happy about it because there's a 30-second shot clock and two 20-minute halves. Jackie, I've been saying anytime that we can make it more like the professional game, it's good for these young fellas to get these looks. It ramps up the offense, and now you know that you got to play with a little bit of pressure instead of taking your time, which we're accustomed to in Jersey Ball. Down to three seconds left on that shot clock. Williams in the lane, knocks it down. How about that mid-ranger right there, Jackie? Right into the open area. A little fade action, no problem, right on the money. That's what I'm talking about, setting the tone. Williams, the six-footer, committed to go play his next four years at Bucknell. He is a key piece of this squad, especially on the offensive end. In the corner, a three ball on the other side for Pasha. No good, but an offensive board and put back two. Creating those second chance efforts, you know, and that's what it's all about. Staying active. I promise you, there's going to be no half stepping in these games all weekend. Rippy has the isolation, getting to the bucket, contact, no, but a foul. And he's got two free throws coming up. Deron Rippy, you mentioned it, one of the last cuts for that Team USA U16 team, and he's going to have just about any offer he wants by the time he gets to his senior year. I mean, Jackie, he's given up some height there, but not giving up power. I mean, that was a six foot four defender on him, and he was able to move him. <laughs> pretty decently, almost like an uh, offensive lineman on the defensive tackle driving down the line. First free throw off the mark. Yeah, just a sophomore, so still two years to go. Already a four-star prospect. Several Division I offers, including the local St. John's, Rutgers. He's also got Washington, Texas A&M. Interest from plenty more. Kentucky, Yukon, North Carolina. So he will have a litany of offers. Take your pick, young fella. On the near side wing, Betsy gives it up. Rodriguez surveying down low, the fall away, rattles out. Tip, Ayakwaba comes down with it, and Blair will take it the other way. I absolutely love the defensive rotation on that one for Blair. Williams stepping right into one and knocking it down, dead on. Before I can even finish my sentence, there, how about that, right into the shot. And a nice answer there after a great defensive possession and rotation that forced the double team down, on the last, down in the block last time out. Getting to the rim is Jamison, great pivot and lays it home with the left hand showing off the patience. That's just old school basketball right there, establishing position, putting up a little hook shot and using the glass. Old school, I loved everything about it. Schmid across the lane to Williams cutting. Nice handle, Ayakwaba, no good. 
Falls off the iron into the hands of Pasha. Pasha taking it coast to coast. Good job by Williams to step in front. Stops the break and Blair will reset. I'm sorry, St. Thomas Moore will reset. Stepping into a three ball and knocking it down, London Jamison. All they needed was just to just gather a little bit, get that rhythm from the dribble, and you see staying right on beat. Defender in his face, no problem, splashing at home. That is one of the identities of this team. They can shoot the basketball from the outside, up and down the lineup. On the other end, Ayakwaba inside, no good. A lot of contact down low, and it looks like they're going to get Jack Bailey on the foul. I didn't quite see it that way. It looked like he got hooked up by the rebounder. Yeah, no, I'm with you, and... Uh... They've been trying to go to that look where Ayakwaba hasn't been able to make it yet. Still trying to get that range and try to adjust to it. I'm sure we're going to be seeing some dominant paint play from him coming down. Pasha gets the screen from Rodriguez. Three minutes gone by in the first half. Right hand, no good off the front iron. Williams up ahead to Schmidt, running the break. Lefty floater, too strong. Strong rebound from Tyler Betsy. And this is where you're seeing the shot clock coming into play, Jackie. Pulls on the straightaway three. That one no good, but Betsy at 6'8", showing off the uh, versatility. The ball handling and no fear stepping into a three. Same thing on the other side for Rippy, but he can't convert. Both teams a bit cold out of the gates. Down low, Rodriguez, that's an easy one. Uh, just caught him in transition there, you know, two defenders playing up high. He's able to sweep in right behind them, and a nice little floater pass ends up right where it needs to be in an easy layup there. It's all about that transition game, and with that shot clock, it speeds up the game, it speeds up your thinking. You gotta be able to move with your head on a swivel. And Coach Mantegna will take a timeout. Three and a half minutes gone down in this first half, and as we mentioned, both teams a little bit cold out of the gates, but no issue with pace. As you check out a couple of the buckets, Rodriguez getting some work in down low. That was the last bucket leading up to the timeout. And so we'll see which team really finds their stride offensively first. St. Thomas Moore, as I mentioned, relying on that three ball and trying to get it going early. And, you know, trying to let it rip here as, uh, you know, still close, only a three-point game. I expect nothing but three-point barrages coming in this one with the shooters that we're seeing on this court. It's all about getting those open looks and being fearless to let it rip in the big moments. Rippy double team, the full court press from St. Thomas Moore out of the timeout. Williams will break it. It was just an initial trap, and then the Chancellors called the dogs off, it seemed like. Rippy gives it up. Williams, green light, knocks down another one. Great shooting, but how about the screen that ends up with that swing motion, getting him up top, wide open, and he makes him pay for it. Just perfect technique, great ball movement, and a great design play. Jaden Williams carrying the load offensively early on. Ayakwaba getting on the floor, but it, pa Pasha comes up with it. Down low, layup no good, but a whistle. Davies got it over two Blair defenders, but just couldn't get the roll. Yeah, just too much contact on that one. And, and the pass, uh, if, if it was, wasn't was a bounce pass, he might have been able to go up and, and fully beat the defense on a, a get the look. But because it ends up as that bounce back, he actually gave uh, Blair a, a second to regain and, and try to alter the shot. But nonetheless, here we are at the line. First one left short, Davies, the senior. He was the 2022-23 main player of the year at Thornton Academy, averaged 20 points per game last season, but he comes up empty at the line right there, so we remain deadlocked nine apiece with 15 and a half to play in half number one. Schmidt up at the volleyball line, surveying. Ayakwaba had it poked away, but right into the hands of Bailey. Drive and kick, Williams isolated. Pulls another three, got another three! Jaden Williams getting anything he wants in the early goings. Uh, just absolutely insane right now. Talk about a shooting performance. I mean, he's hit it from the wing, up top, dead on, and now a steal. Takes that one away. On the break, it's a foot race, and he's got two more. How about the start for the Bucknell commit, Jaden Williams? 
yeah, committed back on November 9th, I believe it was, Jackie. And, and Bucknell has a very active player. He's doing everything that Blair needs him to right now. And efficient. Coach Mantegna called him the engine that makes us go. On the other end, three ball no good for Pasha. Blair racing it ahead. Schmid to the bucket, no but a foul. Dished it off right at the end, so they might call that on the floor. And we see our first subs of the game. Shamir Green, the 6'3 senior, checking in for St. Thomas Moore. And on the other side, Brendan Oliver in for Blair Academy. Rippy throwing it in. Oliver, new man, gets it down low. Ayakwaba backing down. 20 on the shot clock for Williams. Rippy spinning, no good, and a walk before the shot. Just getting tangled up there. Rippy trying to rip through the defense on there, but met two tall trees right there in the lane and just couldn't get through. Yeah, another thing you cannot question is the size of St. Thomas Moore, but Blair is one of the teams that can match it. On cue, Ryan Hempfling, the 6'9 junior, checks in, as well as LJ Saunders, the junior guard. So both teams going to the bench early. Interesting to see Blair Academy using the bench more. That one's no good for Betsy, who's been quiet early on. St. Thomas Moore is known for their depth. Three ball in the corner, too strong off the hands of Oliver. And St. Thomas Moore, as I mentioned, they run about 12 guys deep. They've only gone one man into the bench so far. In the corner, Betsy, that one's no good. Rippy, kick out, gets it back. And now he'll reset it up top to Saunders. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Oliver, left hand with a step. Too strong, missed everything. In transition, Jamison, Euro stepping, poked away. Off his foot, back to Blair. And Jackie, I'll tell you right now, they gotta have you for a play-by-play. -play. I'm just sitting back and enjoying this one. There's so much speed. You see the rotations, and a couple of times, just some missed opportunities, though, for Blair on that uh, offensive possession. That looked to be a nice look, getting right down into the lane last time, but you gotta be able to finish at the rim. Williams had a step and draws the foul. Jaden Williams is getting to the bucket at will, and it helps that he's been very efficient from outside so far. Both of these teams, no problem getting up and down. No, absolutely not. The conditioning is top notch. That's exactly what we're getting here right now. But how about Williams? I mean, this uh, young man's game is absolutely fantastic. First free throw is good. He's led all scorers so far. Roy Igwe into the game for St. Thomas Moore. And uh, I'll tell you, I, I really loved how he got to the line on this. You, you see, being able to shield the defender off, but with your dominant hand, not having to go to that opposite lefty, get him to the free throw line, you know, just showing off the power and the speed as he makes that second one. Seven minutes down in this first half. 16 to nine, Blair in front. A nice little 7-0 run here. That one poked away. Once again, it's Williams with the active hands. Rippy on the break, slamming it down. Jackie, you gotta be kidding me. That isn't even bounce. That is NASA air lift off capability. Where did that even come from? Are you kidding me? Rippy ripping into the air and ripping the, the lid off this place. Moon what shoes that? for Duran Rippey, and Jerry Quinn needs to burn a timeout, and rightfully so, because the momentum was starting to cause an avalanche, and this is the exclamation point. How about Duran Rippey? Just absolutely fantastic, and I was just about to say, Jaden Williams' timing of the game of basketball, the way that he times up his shot, he chimes up his decision-making, and he timed up that steal is all top-notch, and just as I'm about to highlight him, Duran Rippey steals the... Sh the uh, the uh, highlight away and the glory with a dunk like that. I mean, Jackie, I thought he was just going up with a regular layup there. And the next thing you know, the kid is literally eye level with the rim. That is supreme athleticism. You saw Coach Joe Mantegna there in the Blair prep huddle. Well, 
He has sent six players to the NBA in his 25 years. I know it's early with Rippy just in his sophomore year, but I feel pretty good saying he might have his seventh right there. Yeah, I, listen, you got that right for sure. I, I mean, I, I'm speechless right now. But listen, this is the kind of talent that you're bringing in if you're Blair Academy. I mean, we mentioned Luau Deng. That was uh, Coach Mantenega's first ever recruit at Blair. I mean, the first ever recruit ever, and it's Luau Deng. I, I, that's just fun and talent. Next level for me. Blair comes out of the timeout in the zone, and how about the zone breaker? Tyler Betsy, a whistle down low. Believe it was after the basket. And it seems as though St. Thomas Moore is gonna retain the ball as well. So a chance at a five or six point possession for the Chancellors. Very interesting, gotta watch with the fouls, they pile up, and now a much needed break. If they can get another three here, they're working with some serious comeback capability. Into the lane, taken away, and a whistle on the reach in. Jamison thought he was going up. It's gonna be called on the floor, so just a baseline out of bounds for St. Thomas Moore, but how about Coach Quinn? Such a legend, he could call a timeout and come out of it with a, a five or six point play. Well, you know what? I, that's just what it comes down to. We, we talked about the, these head coaches and their resumes. Jackie, two of the best the nation has to offer. Jameson hop stepping, left it short. Nice defense from Hempfling. Williams wants the screen, gets the screen. He likes the matchup with Igwe, pulls a three, got another one! Jaden Williams taking over. He saw that he had the big fella on him, and he said that's a mismatch out in, in the perimeter. Let me take him into the deep waters and show him the range, and once again, nailing it home. Down low, Jamison this time finishes. Nice job through the contact there. Keep those quick scores. It's all about the response. You gotta keep that momentum. You don't need it all back in one possession. You gotta keep pace and pick your moments. Rippy directing traffic, wants the screen, going right to the bucket, kick out, three ball, short off the front rim from Oliver, Jamison out on the break, oh he lost the handle, recovered by Dante Green, fresh into the game, he goes to the bucket, can't finish, long rebound, Oliver poked away, whistle, and a reach in foul, going against Shamir Green. I don't know about that reach in foul on that. It was a loose ball. I, I thought he did hit it. Uh, I, I don't know, Jackie, honestly, but Shamir Green, though, you know, coming in, making a big, trying to make a big play. You, you can't knock it for sure, but you know what they say, going back to that missed dunk, two for safety, one for bounce. You might want to go up with the two-hander on that one if you're capable. Of course, I am not. Jameson goes to the bench after the missed dunk. James LaFrance, the senior guard, checking in. Still a lot of size out there for St. Thomas Moore. LaFrance 6-2 at the guard spot. Rippy over the head. Williams just off the front rim. The heat check, no good. And Dante Green draws the foul. Brother of multiple-time NBA champion Danny Green. Just got one with my Lakers. I believe has one with the Toronto Raptors and a pair with San Antonio, if I'm not mistaken. Isaiah Pasha on for the Chancellors. 21 to 14, Blair advantage. Nearly halfway through this first half. Cross court pass, Pasha backing down on Schmid. Liked the matchup and made a count. How about that one? I mean, he gets the matchup that he wants coming down baseline and had enough speed but still controlled the tempo to get to the spot that he needed, and that's perfect use of the glass. Schmidt trying to answer, now gives it up. Into the lane, Saunders has to reset. Ayakwaba trying to get baseline, nine on the shot clock, out of bounds, it'll stay with Blair Academy. Going back to that bucket on the other end, Talking to the St. Thomas Moore coaching staff, they, they call Pasha a hybrid guard, standing at 6'4". He showed off there a little bit of that forward skill set. 
Rippey gets free off the inbound, off the front rim, no good. Yeah, you can see why they, they look at him that way. I mean, he, he looked. It was a good feed up ahead there. Great vision to find Betsy, but on the pump fake and drive to the bucket, he took an extra step. So Blair Academy gets it back. 21 to 16, trying to add to the advantage. Just past the 10 minute mark here at Franklin High School. Jack Bartek alongside Brandon Marazzo. It's NJ Hoop Recruit powered by All Abilities Live. Working baseline, reverse lay in, no good for Oliver. Betsy in transition to the bucket. Switched hands, no good. Gets his own miss. Counted in the foul. That's what we're talking about right there. I mean, that's D1 capability, a good mindset. Keeps fighting for it and ends up coming away with it. I mean, Betsy, the 57th ranked uh, player in the nation for first seniors according to the ESPN Top 100. And that was just a dog mentality, ripping that one, staying with it, Jackie. He was the 22-23 Connecticut Gatorade Player of the Year. Committed to Cincinnati, knocks down the free throw. Jaden Williams back into the game for Blair Academy. Jackie, we we'll always talk about mascots here as we have the Chancellors and the Buccaneers Great in the house. Great mascot matchup. Absolutely. But uh, how about the Bearcats for a mascot name? Also a good one. You know I love some originality. Well, we got some more coming for you later on as uh, competition goes on through tomorrow. Williams floating it up to Ayakwaba. Good hands from Niradko on the other end. Poked away. It'll go back to Blair Academy. Good athleticism from Niradko. Almost looked like a cornerback playing through the hands. For sure, but I, I think, was that Jaden Williams that was able to get a hand in there to knock that one out of bounds from behind? He's all over the place. They're actually going to say that this will stay with St. Thomas Moore now. So a change of the call on the floor. LaFrance can't make a count. Niradko offensive board, kick out, three ball, no. Uh, nice strong rebound by Ayakwaba. St. Thomas Moore just not able to get it going from beyond the arc. So far at least, Rippey was looking for Ayakwaba, turns it over and thinking to himself he should have put the floater up. Yeah, you know, he had the space. He, he's trying to get Ayaguaba involved, though, as we've seen the big fella set up down low uh, and, and try to go to work with it. But, you know, sometimes when you're a player like Rippy, you just got to take it yourself. Oh, getting right to the bucket. No good is Pasha. Nice defense from Ayaguaba to go straight up and force the miss. Ayaguaba just taking the entire momentum out of him. Williams has the isolation. Works it down low to the big fella. Ayak Waba carving out space, but he lost it. Pasha over to Green. Oh, tried for the slam, but for the second time tonight, a missed dunk for St. Thomas Moore, and Blair gets it back. For sure, and uh, you know, I'm kind of wondering, you, you did see Jaden Williams try to step in on that play. I'm wondering if he got the, uh, the chancellor thinking about it just a little bit, might have messed up his time, and normally you'll see the player try to take a charge in that, but Williams smart enough to affect the shot and get out of the way. A cold spell here for Blair Academy has allowed St. Thomas Moore back into the ball game. And a great poke away there by Dante Green on the break. He loses the handle. And as I was just alluding to, Blair with a little bit of a dry spell, letting the Chancellors back in it, cutting, cutting it down to a two-point game. They have not taken full advantage, though. They should easily be in the lead here. A couple of missed opportunities. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's just, you, you know, you talk about the missed dunks. You, you see the uh, the blown layup on that one. It, it's just keeping calm and under pressure. I mean, sometimes you, you got that space and your eyes get so wide and that you, you almost forget that you got the ball in your hands and you lose uh, touch on it. First action today for Jaden Hernandez, the freshman for Blair Academy. Schmid draws the whistle on the drive. 7.45 to play in half number one. Blair on top, 21 to 19 over St. Thomas Moore. Williams the trigger man underneath. Schmid 
Baseline. Gets it back. Driving left. Ayakwaba working inside. Short. Rebound tapped around. Green comes away with it. Green down the middle of the lane. Short. Nice strong rebound from Oliver. Chins it and takes it the other way himself. Oliver spinning. Falling away. Short. And I think we're ripping out on the court right now. You're actually seeing uh, St. Thomas Moore clogging the paint a little bit, a little more, uh, not having to worry about outside as much. On the other side, Jameson no good once again. That three ball just not going down for the Chancellors here in the first half. Williams off the screen, left hand scoop, no good. Looks like he lost the handle. Green, Chancellors have numbers if they want them. Pasha going to the bucket, blocked away, loose ball. Green has it once again, good use of the body. Kicks it out, and now the Chancellors will slow it down and reset with 15 on the shot clock. Down to 10 on the shot clock now. Green into the corner, contested three. Short once again, Ayakwaba has the rebound. That time it was LaFrance no good from the corner. A lid on the bucket right now for both teams. Got nearly three minutes without a point here. Down low, Ayakwaba backing down, looking to end the drought. Hook shot, count it. That's what I'm talking about, Jack. You see the big man, he's been trying to set up camp down there for the entire first half. Had a, uh, got some looks, was having trouble finding his range, but he knew once he got the space, and you see there a, a nice step to open it up a little bit, extend the range, and a beautiful hook. Beautiful touch from Ike Waba. Jameson driving kick in the corner. LaFrance gets one to go for the Chancellors. Just like that, a one point game. It's, it's whatever you can do, I'll match and keep this one very much alive here in half number one. Down to a one point ball game, five and a half to play in the first half. And a whistle on the entry pass. Ike Waba drew the foul on Igwe. Some subs coming in. Deron Rippey re-enters along with Ryan Hempfling. Dante Green to the bench. Igwe to the bench. Brendan Oliver to toss it in for Blair. And now a timeout. Coach Mantegna wants to talk things over. 5.27 to play in the first half, so... Blair Academy got off to the strong start, but St. Thomas Moore finding their footing here and doing good work on the defensive end. I mean, it's just staying active and creating those second chances. You see both teams having some offense to struggle, but where they're lacking in offense, they've tried, they've really been zoning in on defense, and that's what the best teams do. It, you find the momentum where you can. However, we got an absolute battle on this court right now, either one. Just, it's like they get right next to each other and nobody able to really pull away just yet. But you know, it's all about that mental toughness. It's all about sticking with it, the little things, and keep getting those shooters open, even though the three ball hasn't been the strongest that we're used to seeing from these teams. It's still very much capable. Coach Jerry Quinn there, commanding the St. Thomas Moore huddle. I'll tell you what, if I look like that after 46 years of work, I'll be a very happy man. Uh, you got that right for sure, I mean, <laughs> Jackie, uh, he, he, he have, looks like he could go out and play point guard uh, in the second half. I was just gonna say, you know, he might have the uh, the elixir of youth somewhere. I mean, the game of basketball, being a coach, you know, I'm sure it takes a toll on you, but not on that man. You know, when you do what you love every day, I mean, you age like fine wine. Yeah, he was a baller back in his day. Played at Archbishop Malloy, the great New York school, and went on to play his college days at Central Connecticut State. In high school, he was part of a championship team, and I'm sure he could still get out there and get you some buckets if you needed them. 5.27 to play, out of the timeout. Williams had space, but it's short. Loose ball, bodies on the floor. Looks like Jameson has it, in some trouble though, and we'll get a jump ball. You know, going back with uh, Coach Quinn, you know, you know what I think it might be a real secret? When you can spend time with family while out work, you know, and getting those extra hours in, I think that might work out because I'm pretty sure his son, Matt, is also the head of the school for St. Thomas More. You know, so as you're walking around campus, what's up, Pop? Let's go grab some lunch. 
You know, not everybody gets to do that. At the five minute mark here in the first half, a one point Blair Academy lead. St. Thomas Moore looking to go in front. Jameson had space, no good. Rattles out inside, put back, no. Tapped out of bounds, it'll stay with St. Thomas Moore. So a couple really good looks and the Chancellor is just not taking advantage of their opportunities early on. No, you, you got that right, Jackie. And that was a beautiful outlet pass that ended up being wasted, I believe, from Pasha. You got to be able to make those shots when he's making plays like that for you. Inside, oh, another tough miss. That time it was LaFrance who couldn't put the touch on it. And with 440 left in the first half, Blair gets it back trying to add to the lead. Another new face into the game right there. Thought about the three, Zach Kalaja, the junior. Getting to the bucket and laying it in with the right hand, Brendan Oliver, nice burst. Great job by Oliver being able to turn that corner and pick up the speed as he's coming down the lane. And just one step ahead of the defender, perfect tempo and lays it in beautifully. Jameson, back to Betsy, trying to get to the bucket, draws the foul beforehand, Rippy. Not happy with it. And for the Chancellors, you'd have to think it'll be a key to get Tyler Betsy going. Absolutely, I mean, especially they're missing a couple of guys today uh, in Ben Defty and I believe Justin Menard. But someone's gotta be able to step up. He's more than capable. Uh, there's a reason why he's on that top 100 list for sure. The reason why he's gonna be playing D1 in Cincinnati. I think they need to look to him to try to get some points here. First free throw, no good. You see some subs checking in. Ayak Waba back into the game for Blair. As LaFrance heads out for St. Thomas Moore. And you mentioned, obviously, two big pieces in Defty and Menard not available today for the Chancellors. So as much as they haven't been at their sharpest, you have to take it with the fact that they're missing two of their top offensive pieces. No, absolutely, but you know, you hear these top programs always talk about, that just means that it's an opportunity for someone else to capture the spotlight and make a play and maybe play into some more minutes. Rippy calling for the screen, reverses it. Nice handle, back door, great feed, Kalaja inside, Ayak Waba, that is beautiful offense from the Buccaneers. Just tight passes, threading needles left and right on that one, and capped off by the big fella in traffic, counted three Chancellors on him, and the Buccaneers able to find the treasure. Jameson almost had it poked away. Good work to save it. Good ball movement in the corner. Betsy gets one to go. Fast passing ends up in the corner. We talked about Betsy needing to get going, and he nails it there. And you know what they say, sometimes you just have to see one go down. Got those two free throws. Watch out. Williams trying to answer. Floater, short. Ayak Waba going to work on the glass, and he'll shoot two. And you talk about just needing to see one go in. Ayak Waba has really uh, beefed up the physicality since he had that first hook shot down low, and now being able to really zone in, catching some tight passes, being able to take the contact, fighting to the line here. All you need is a little confidence boost. Coach Mantegna calls Ayakwaba one of those old school pounding centers. And he's gonna make it hurt down low, but he's no slouch in the classroom either. 4.2 GPA for the 6'9 senior. I can't even figure out how to get to 4.0. I didn't even know it went past 4.0. Second free throw for Ayakwaba off the mark. So he comes up empty at the line there and with three minutes to play, we're deadlocked at 27 apiece. Well, what do you do, you take night classes to get up there? Down low, Jamison working on the block, feeds to Betsy, right hand laying. Look at the hang time there from Tyler Betsy. How about the little jelly? Looked like he was going up for the dunk, saw the contact coming and adjust right to the layup. That is just high level and if you blink, you miss it. Betsy starting to heat up. That's a sore sight for the Buccaneers. Great backdoor feed by Rippy and a tough finish on the other end. Brendan Oliver with the bucket. It's exactly what Blair needs though, trying to get other people going and Rippy's vision. Next Three level. Ball is good on the other end for Isaiah Pasha. It's buckets galore now. Quiet offensively early, but back 
back and forth we go down the home stretch of the first half. Williams off the double screen. He was the hot hand early for Blair. Can't knock that one down. Betsy rips down the rebound. Up ahead, Jamison lobs, swatted away by Rippey. Great hands, but Dante Green recovers it. Reset, three ball, Pasha, back to back for Isaiah Pasha. That's a great way of recovering because I looked like Rippey who just took out all the momentum for a second, leaping into the air, getting that block on what was surely gonna be an alley-oop, but a nice job by St. Thomas Moore staying with it and Pasha back to back on a pair of triples. Ayakwaba no good in the blink of an eye. It's a six point St. Thomas Moore lead. Jamison lost it. Rippey up ahead to Williams. Gives it back to Rippy for the slam. And there you have the unselfishness. I mean, Williams could have went up with it. Rippy could have took it the first time. He goes to Williams, and Williams goes, no, I insist. Give the people a show, and the yep. bounce is elite. I think he wanted just as badly as us to see the dunk package once again from Rippy. He is a high flyer. Under a minute to play in the first half. Betsy off the window and in. Tyler Betsy is officially hot. And he gets the technical foul afterwards, talking to the Blair Academy bench. He can't believe it, but you can see that coming. The last couple baskets, he's had words for the Buccaneers bench, and that time he took it a bit too far. Coach Quinn didn't love it, and so a technical free throw coming up for Jaden Williams. Uh, you know, and they have the lead here. You just can't afford that to happen, but let's take a look back here. And the steal coming right from Rippy over to his main man, Williams. And he goes, I insist, and two hands for safety with all the power. That's a sophomore. As the technical free throw, no good for Jaden Williams. Second one coming up. This is a chance here for Blair Academy to stop the bleeding. It was all St. Thomas Moore, and that's the tough part about that technical foul as you kill all the momentum. Williams knocks down the second, so it's down to a five-point game. And Blair Academy has the basketball as well. And you see Betsy still saying, hey, that's my bad, but I'll make up for it here. A good learning moment. For sure, and let's not forget, though, I, I believe Blair Academy is going to have the ball, too. Yeah, 52 seconds to play in the first half. The Buccaneers looking to add to a five, or take away from a five-point deficit. But Green has the steal inside. Betsy no good. Oh, and they're going to call a walk. I thought they were going to get a foul leading to the walk, but no argument from Betsy. And Blair dodges a bullet. Well, I'm wondering if he doesn't have the technical if he argues that. I don't know if he had time to travel there, Jackie. Green showing great tenacity defensively. Has another steal, and this time draws the foul. Ending up in the seats, too, as you see him crashing into the chairs, getting helped up. Uh, Green ramping it up uh, ever since that uh, technical free throw came. And sometimes you just got to lock in and build up momentum, when, especially when it's taken away from you on some fouls. But now, they'll be at the free throw line. Mentioned the brother of Danny Green, number eight player in his class in the state of New York. First free throw for Green. Front end of a one and one is good. And you can see the uh, the defensive pedigree on those back-to-back -back plays. I mean, just perfect positioning, even giving up a little bit of contact, but not enough to get the foul. But he uses that wingspan to end up coming up away with the steals. Left the second one short, but an offensive board swatted away by Ayakwaba. So good work on the glass by Pasha, but Ayakwaba not taking the playoff. And you know, just looking at Iguaba's, you know, tricep uh, area, you know, giving me Alonzo morning feels, especially coming down with a block like that. I'm wondering if uh, Pasha's arm's still uh, reverbing. Four second difference between game clock and shot clock down to the final 25 seconds of the half. Pasha gives it up. Green all alone on the wing. Gives it to Betsy. Trying to work it down low, they do, and Jamison has the slam. How about Jamison sealing off the defender? Perfect moves down low, perfect positioning. He rips through the spin, two for safety, baby. Shot clock turned off, Williams in the lane, two seconds left, fall away, jump ball before. And it'll stay with Blair Academy 
1.6 to play, and we'll see what they have up their sleeve, but how about on the other end, St. Thomas Moore just picked that matchup out with a good offensive set. It's high cue drawing it up, and great execution. Williams trying to get it to Ayakwaba. Green with another steal, the heave, no good at the horn, but a strong end to the first half by St. Thomas Moore, and it leads them to a 40 to 32 lead at the break. Jackie did flip this one a little bit upside down for sure as they were trailing most of that first half and then just out of nowhere, you know, you look to your best guy to step up and Betsy did getting things going and the guys following and then you had Green's defense really capstone in the last minute uh, or so of, of play and they're in some good position right now. Yeah, no doubt. I, I was impressed with Blair early on, especially defensively. They weren't giving up anything easy to St. Thomas Moore. But then the shots started falling, and it massively changed the dynamic of this ball game. Uh, listen, sometimes all you need to do, as you said, is just see one going, and you get the confidence. And speaking of one going, you check out some of the replays. It was all Jaden Williams early, and they had to rely on some buckets inside. Did St. Thomas Moore as the outside shot wasn't falling? Jamison played a pretty big role early on. Once again, the Chancellor is without Defty and Menard. Jameson had the three ball right there as well. In transition, fed it up ahead to, I believe that was uh, Rodriguez finishing off the layup. And that started the run for St. Thomas Moore, but Jaden Williams was the hot hand for Blair. I mean, Jaden Williams was all over the place. Look at this steal. I mean, just active prowess, perfect layup, no problem. He was all over the court in that first half. And here's Jamison working baseline, had it ripped away by Williams. Rippy went top floor. I mean, just climbing steps. <laughs> I'm still on his way up. Rumor has it, he's still floating in the air. Williams working once again, knocking down the three ball. He was very efficient from beyond the arc. But at the end of the half, Betsy got it going for the Chancellors. All about those second effort points, and that's what they were great at, keeping possessions alive. Inside, a nice finish right there from Brendan Oliver, who provided the Buccaneers with some big minutes off the bench. This was the beautiful possession with the feed to Ayak Waba for two. Rippy, another great feed. Oliver on the other end of it. Rippy, so much creating in that first half. He's a magician, man, but it was the three point shots that got them back in and alive with that defensive play. Pushing it into the paint, but hey, look at this. You want to see a pair of teammates link up? Boom, baby. And the second time, Rippy went up and slammed it home. The sophomore showing off the athleticism. Jamison had the answer on the other end right by the end of the half. And that takes us to the break. A 40-32 to St. Thomas Moore lead. And the engine at the end of that first half was Tyler Betsy. No, absolutely. And you know, it's all about picking your moments. The great Michael Jordan struggled a little bit early on just getting those points out there. But Phil Jackson told him it's all about picking your moments. And that's what we saw from Tyler Betsy. He just needed to see one go down. And it started with free throws, Jackie. And any way that you could get the momentum, why not? And then boom, coming back. Highlight play after highlight play. He's one of the good ones. And for Blair, the guard play was the key in that first half. They got some nice work from Ayak Waba, but great work by Rippy and especially Jaden Williams carrying the scoring load early on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Williams' hot hand is what got the Buccaneers flying. I mean, he couldn't miss within that first seven to ten minutes of play. It felt like just everything from downtown was making the moves. Great defense. I loved everything of it. And then, of course, Rippy, I mean, man, ripping the ball away from defenders, ripping the rim off on the dunks. Very active, but for me, the most important part, the vision from yeah. the creation. I mean, Jackie, he was just creating like a, a great sound coach, uh, you know, over in Puerto Rico, as my uh, girlfriend's family does. And if you don't know nothing about it, it's nothing but flavor. Well, Rippy showed off the whole package in the first half, but he's gonna need to do a little bit more in half number two. St. Thomas Moore leads it at the break, 40 to 32. Jack Bartek, Brandon Marazzo here at Franklin High School in Somerset, New Jersey. Game one, day two of the Metro Classic. It's NJ Hoover Crew.
powered by All Abilities Live. We got the second half of this one coming up. And then we'll have the 9 o'clock game, Roselle Catholic and Manasquan. We're going to step aside for a minute here, take a quick break, and we'll be back for second half action in just a moment. Jack Bartek, Brandon Marazzo back here at the Metro Classic. NJ Hoop Recruit powered by All Abilities Live as we get ready for the second half. St. Thomas Moore, a big end to that first half, taking a 40-32 to 32 lead as the two teams come out of the locker room. We, uh, we want to thank you also for bearing with us yesterday through some technical difficulties and... Forty to thirty-two, St. Thomas More leads this one over Blair Academy. Inside, nice feed from AJ Rodriguez, but a whistle on the pass. The group's out there first for St. Thomas More. They go with Shamir Green, uh, AJ Rodriguez, London Jameson, Tyler Betsy, and Isaiah Pasha. As you see, Jameson getting the first bucket of half number two. Jameson, all of his points have been basically done the hard way, down low. He loves the contact. He, he's so comfortable down there. Stays calm and composed. Does a great job. On the other side for Blair, they tried out Jack Bailey, Lucas Schmid, Jaden Williams, Deron Rippey, and Eric Ayakwaba on cue, laying it in. Well, Jackie, I told you, just like Alonzo Morning, you know, nothing fancy about it. Just get to the spot and, and cutting through the defense down low, creating space. Betsy, great pump fake. A hanging in the air and putting it in with the right hand. It's always curious. What's the decision? Do you try to jam it home? Do you go with the safe layup? And that time, he could have took either option. Ayakwaba, no good. Nice rebound by Rodriguez, 10 point lead for St. Thomas Moore is their largest of the day. Betsy knocks down a triple. And you saw Betsy calling for that one. I'm open, I'm open, it comes. And he walks right into it, smooth as butter stroke. Tack on another three. He was a different player in that last five minutes of the first half. It's carried over in half number two. And they draw an offensive foul right there, I believe, against Williams. Some defense got to step up here now for the Buccaneers. They, it's, they've been kind of getting picked apart a little bit towards the end. And Trying that's what I'm talking about. Thread the needle back door with Shamir Green. Bailey in transition, hangs and finishes. Nice job going into the contact. Actually adjusts his shot right back to where it needs to be. It's a great adjustment there in the air. Betsy has 20 now for the Chancellors to lead all scorers. He has been spectacular over the past few minutes of gameplay. That time gives it up though. Williams, great interception. Reverse lane is good. You see that one just a little bit around the world, but how about Williams just knew exactly where that pass was gonna be. He literally walked into that steal, Jackie. And a timeout. Coach Quinn wants to talk about it. So although a great run leading up to that giveaway, they wanna figure things out here an 11 point lead. And man, they have come out strong here in half number two. No, for sure, but you know, you gotta give it to Jaden Williams uh, on that uh, interception, getting things going. The, the Blair Academy needs somebody to be that spark. And right now, I mean, that interception just gave me shades. Back, remember when Ed Reed, fake to go right, comes all the way back across the field and jumps right into the interception. He walks away with it. They need more plays like that. They gotta make it easy on themselves. They need that transition basketball coming away and get off into those runways points. See the leadership there from Jaden Williams alongside 25th year head man Joe Mantegna. And he's got his work cut out for him trying to draw up this defense. St. Thomas Moore, nine of their last 10 from the field. They have gotten it any way they've wanted it. Continuing into the second half. 
Two and a half minutes down here in the second frame. Betsy the inbounder having some trouble and gives it away. Great defense from Schmid going right to the bucket. Patience left it short though. Oh, you gotta use the glass just better. It was a great steal and a great hesitation move to get open up, but he rushed it just a little bit. Good work by Betsy to control it and Jamison draws the foul on the other end. You gotta give it to St. Thomas more. I, I mean, they literally have found the groove and they've just been growing here a bit. Uh, and if they could keep it going and get those shooters uh, to their spots like they were towards the end of that first half, they're gonna be in some great position. Jameson, too much space, hits the triple. And Jameson said, Maz, I know you talked about my paint play, but let me extend the range in case you forgot. I can do it all. Six of their last seven from three. The lead is up to 12. Rippy pass deflected and intercepted. Jamison up ahead, blocked away. Rippy went up top to swat it, and they will call him for a foul. Man, that, that was... is a tough call against Rippy. It looked like he got all ball from here. But Shamir Green going to go to the line after a hard fall. And I think it was just the, the power that, uh, that Green ended up absorbing he went kind of flying and thankfully he's already landed on that shoulder from pretty high up check it out again oh yeah, and they got he got him with the body yep so it was clean up top but a little bit of a hip check down low and green steps up and knocks down the free throw it's always a hard call on that because where do you go i mean yes the defender got the ball is there too much contact that's one of those could go either way for me Second one for Green, too strong. Iaquaba with the board. That's his eighth rebound. He's been strong on the glass for the Buccaneers. 14-point lead, the largest of the afternoon so far for St. Thomas Moore. And that pass deflected by Jameson. Good hands. Green surveying. Betsy, a lot of room off the back rim and out. And a whistle down low. I think they might get Rippy off the ball fighting for the rebound. And tough break, the fifth foul out of the half already for Blair. Yeah, that's a rough break. They were getting off out into the space that we were talking about. That could be a key to them using their speed. But this one's gonna stay here with the Chancellors. Rodriguez gives it up. Green pulls it out to reset. Working off the screen, double team, good hands from Rippy. Betsy, down to 10 on the shot clock, spinning, floating, no, Iaquaba the board. And he gives it away, Jamison, active defensively, draws the foul on Bailey who disagrees and that's just a tough one. For sure, Blair Academy's got to be more secure. I mean, that's multiple times now where they've gotten the possession back and haven't been able to get out of their own half. It's the 11th turnover so far for Blair Academy. Can't be giving away possessions against a team like St. Thomas More, especially with the groove they've found themselves in. Four minutes down in the second half. Coach Mantegna expressing his displeasure. A six to nothing foul discrepancy to start the second half. Inside, Rodriguez makes the turnover sting. I don't even know if he held on to that one. I mean, you saw a wall of white jerseys. And now a whistle. That'll be the first foul against St. Thomas More in this second half. They're going to get Pasha, I believe, on a hold. So Coach Mantegna's pleads pay off. But a 16-point lead for the Chancellors. Williams was the catalyst in the first half for the Buccaneers. See if they could try and get him going here. Iquaba carving out space and laying it in with the left hand. He's been pretty impressive so far today. And... That's not a good sign for the Chancellors. That's Tyler Betsy a little slow to get up. 
Yeah, he's holding that knee right there. That's the last thing you want to see. He doesn't look to be in too much pain, and now he's already back up on his feet. Think he might have just gotten a stinger there. Maybe knocking knees with somebody down low. Looks like he'll shake it off and stay in. 15.30 to play. 54 to 40, St. Thomas Moore in front. Shamir Green. Pasha down low, Betsy likes the matchup with Schmid. Kicks out after the double team, Jamison off the back iron. Up ahead, Oliver across the lane, travel. I'm not sure about that call, but those pivot foot travels are so difficult in real time. It has been a point of emphasis here in the state of New Jersey. This game not necessarily bound to those rules, but played with New Jersey refs. That pass off the bottom of the rim, Schmidt comes away with it, pushing the tempo. In the corner, Oliver lines one up. Short. Still the shooting trouble is continuing now. Going to the rim and laying it in is Pasha. Just a burst of lightning right there. I mean, talk about switching gears. And, and Pasha actually had that, his palm facing the basket. He kind of dropped that one off like a claw machine trying to pick up a toy. He's got 13 for the Chancellors. Impressive showing out of Isaiah Pasha, and he comes up with a loose ball there. Running the three on two. Nice defense, I believe it was Williams who got a hand in the passing lane, but it will stay with St. Thomas Moore as Deron Rippey checks back in. Also off the bench for Blair is Ryan Hempfling. So now 14-12, you know, you're, you're down 16 points. It starts right here with a defensive stop. Working inside, a mismatch, and Betsy gets the easy two. The Chancellors have done a great job picking out matchups down low today. No, for sure, they're getting that mismatch. They're using the height and length to their advantage on that one. And no disrespect to Rippy, it's just that's just too much height to give up. That pass deflected by Betsy up at the Pasha. Tried to slam it, no good but Jamison there for the putback, and I believe it was Rippey who will get the block on that one. Some high flyers, but after the offensive putback, it's up to a 20-point lead for St. Thomas Moore. Yeah, I, and I'll tell you right now, I believe Rippey's standing at six foot two, only a sophomore, still not done growing yet, but Jack, what's he gonna be like if this kid has a growth spur, hits six foot five, because that is the most explosive six two I think I've ever seen. I mean, multiple blocks on what could be highlight dunks on other players. Check Look at it this. out again, my goodness. He got up to the top floor meeting, and he might not even need that growth spurt. Even standing at six two, he can jump with the best of them. Unfortunately though, couldn't stop the second chance Good follow by Jameson, makes it a 20 point game. And St. Thomas Moore really strong out of the locker room here and kind of flexing their muscles. No, for sure, uh, you know, uh, they've, as you've been talking about, getting that mismatch in, in certain parts of the court, I mean, down low, getting that height advantage to work in their favor, getting those tough bu buckets, but putting themselves in that positioning. And then the shooters on the outside, keeping you honest as well. Uh, right now, you got to find a, a response if you're Blair Academy. I'm looking to get this ball into Williams' hand and try to get him hot going again. I want to see Rippy step up on the score in just a little bit. You got 13-42. It is a 20-point game, but hey, stranger things have happened. 20 to 8 here in the second half in favor of St. Thomas Moore. 13 and a half minutes to play, and Blair is going to have to go on a run if they want to get back in it. Rippey trying to get things started. Off the double screen. Kicks it back, LJ Saunders, free throw line, pull up, got it. That's a tough shot too, especially off the dribble. He's able to adjust though, and put it right where it needs to be. Just a nice job off the bench. 
Saunders, the New York City guard. That, that's one you learn on the playground right there. Nice free throw pull up. Betsy couldn't knock down the floater, but Pasha there for the follow, and he adds even more to an already very good day. Rippy almost lost it. Good hands from Pasha, but nice recovery by Rippy to retain it. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Kick back, Hemfling. Gives it up, Oliver, isolated, lost his footing, and now has it taken away by Rodriguez. Up ahead to Betsy, two strides and a slam. That is just some serious court coverage. I mean, two steps, he was already at the basket. Quick answer on the other end from LJ Saunders for three. Good job by Saunders, you know, gotta keep you alive. And this is what we saw happening, you know, a, a bit with uh, the other way in half number one where it was those quick strikes from Blair and St. Tom, Tom, uh, Thomas Moore just trying to keep it close, right? That one off the mark, rebounded by Oliver. Saunders was already thinking about lining up another three, but the handoff was bobbled. This time he'll step into it too strong and rebounded by Pasha. Just miscalculated that one. A little bit of a heat check trying to get it going. He just needed a little couple of inches to the right. Pasha handling, working it down to Betsy. Hand out Jameson, three ball off the back rim. Rippy leads it for Schmid. Schmid hanging, can't finish. Rebound tapped around, pulled out by Hempfling. And now a whistle down low. I believe it might have been a shot clock issue. And I think they are going to go and reset this shot clock up to 15. Some subs coming in. They'll put it up to 16, actually. So 11.20 to play. A 19-point St. Thomas Moore lead. James LaFrance, Will Davies back in there alongside Jack Naratko for the Chancellors. That three ball off the mark. Davies down low to Jamison, baseline. No look feed, but he walked before. And the Buccaneers get it back. Yeah, I don't think uh, Jamison could have believed that one as he looked up, looking at the ref, like, what do you mean? But I think he might have picked up that pivot foot as he was trying to get that pass going. Nine minutes gone by in the second half. All Chancellors. Here in the second frame, Rippy right there off glass and in. Exactly what you need, you know, get your best guys going here. Before you run out of time, it, it's still a chance to mount the comeback. He has game beyond his years as just a sophomore. Very excited to see the bright future ahead for Duran Rippy. Betsy, nice poise handling the double. Working inside near Adco, and they'll reset it. Betsy at the logo with one on the shot clock, heaves, no good, but a great save from Davies. He had a foot on the line. Almost a tremendous hustle play from Will Davies, but the Buccaneers get it back, and you see the shot clock coming into play. No, absolutely. You know, you, you got that 30 seconds. It's always got to be on the back of your mind for sure, and sometimes it just sneaks up on you. You cannot take your time like that. Otherwise, you end up with a turnover. Rippy getting to the bucket. Contact, no, but a foul. So, Duran Rippy headed to the free throw line to shoot two. He plays basketball like it's football because he takes so much contact. He lives in the air and around the rim. And it's just so exciting. I mean, to have that, uh, that Russell Westbrook point guard athleticism is something special. And he's so strong, even for a sophomore. Wait till the grown man strength kicks in around senior year. First free throw's no good. Tyler Betsy to the bench for St. Thomas Moore. Dante Green back in. And it looks like James LaFrance might have twisted up his ankle on that rebound. Davies 